Hi guys, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Sujin and today we are going to talk about how did I choose to go to UPenn to do a master's program in the United States and how you might choose a program that's a best fit for you. So you might be watching this video because you are interested in pursuing a master's degree in the United States to study computer science, uh, but you don't really know which school to apply to or you already have schools in mind, but you're evaluating which schools and programs are a better fit for you. Specifically, a lot of you guys have mentioned whether online masters is worth it, why have I chose to go to on-campus program, and some other questions such as why UPenn versus other schools like Georgia Tech. So today I thought I will share some stories on why I chose and what might be helpful for you to consider before making quite a big financial time and life commitment. Um, a, a bit of a background of myself, I uh, am originally from South Korea, which means I am an international student and I did my undergrad degree at NYU Abu Dhabi and I majored in interactive media, which is a creative technology uh, major which is at the intersection of creative coding, design, UX, uh, and a lot of different things from game development to data visualizations and many other things, to be honest. So the point here is that I do not come from a strict CS background. And it is worthwhile mentioning this point because uh, when I was applying, uh, the first screening of this application process was rather easy for me because I was only looking for schools that accept students who do not hold um, CS undergrad uh, degree because some schools do filter do do not consider students who do not have CS undergrad degree. I had applied to a little over 10 schools in total from UPenn MCIT. This is a very unique program that's specifically designed for folks who do not have CS undergrad degree. So if you do have CS degree, you'll be overqualified and won't be admitted. Um, however, there's also MSCS program at UPenn and data science, which um, might be a great option for you. So um, I just wanted to point that out and other schools uh, I've applied to include Georgia Tech, NYU, MSCS, Columbia, UChicago, uh, Boston University and a few other schools and luckily uh, I got into most of the programs that I have applied to including my top two choices which were uh, UPenn MCIT program and Georgia Tech MSCS program. Yeah, and before we talk more about what are some of the criteria that I looked into when finally choosing which school to accept an offer from, I do want to mention a couple of things. One being that um, I was only looking for master's program within the States because um, one of the goals that I wanted to take away from master's was to obtain an OPT work visa. Uh, having had graduated NYU Abu Dhabi, uh, even after graduation, I did not have a work visa uh, that comes with the degrees. So there are many other great universities and master's program across the world, be it Europe, Asia, even within the, U uh, the Middle East, but those were not an option for me because it won't solve the visa issues. Point number two directly relates to the point that I've just discussed earlier. Um, when I was doing a research on which program to apply, um, I've noticed that there's a lot of programs that have online master's program that, that are well structured and they um, give the a diploma that's almost the same as the on-campus one. UPenn also has an online program as well as Georgia Tech, but uh, if you get a master's degree through an online program, um, as an international student, I won't have a work uh, visa uh, provided through that program. So again, it ties back to the visa issues. So I was specifically looking for on-campus programs. Okay, with that being said, uh, let's talk about a few criteria that I had considered when I was evaluating this uh, different schools. So first criteria is ROI and job outcome. Obviously, learning is a core part of pursuing a master's degree. For me as well, I really wanted to have my foundation very, very strong. And I was really excited to take more advanced CS courses. However, 
because master's program in the United States on subsidized are very, very expensive. And also it's your opportunity cost. So it's inevitable for you and myself to consider um, what's the ROI and job outcome of this program. I used a couple of different uh, resources to um, do some research on what's the potential outcome that I could expect after graduating from this degree. One of them being the official reports from the respective schools. For UPenn, I found a CIS Engineering post-graduation plan reports. Back then, I was looking at the reports from 2022, where it says 80% of the students after graduation are planning for full-time employment, 8% employment. are continuing their education, 7.6% are seeking for employment. Um, and some of the top hiring employers include Amazon, Meta, Google, Microsoft, Huawei, LinkedIn, Oracle, NVIDIA, Palantir, and more. Uh, the overall salaries was reported as 125K from 30K uh, to 440k with signing bonus 26k on average. So this number I would have to say are a total median amongst all engineering programs at Penn from data science, MSCS, robotics, and more. But it gives it does give a breakdown per program on which company they were hired from after graduation. For Georgia Tech, uh, for the same year academic year 2022 report, it doesn't give uh, an official um, list of uh, which are the top hiring employers, but it does give detailed break breakdown on salary per program, where its median is also 125K um, with median signing bonus uh, of 20K. Uh, so career outcome wise, both schools seem relatively strong and um, at least none of these were a deal break breaker reasons for me to choose one school over another. And uh, obviously, because these are the reports given from school who's trying to sell the program, uh, you might want to uh, uh, interpret these numbers with a grain of salt, but you can obviously do other research by yourself, such as uh, what I did was I on LinkedIn to see like what are the alumni currently doing, especially the recent alumni, like which companies are they working for, um, what's their role, and not only stopping uh, there, uh, what I did is I have cold emailed um, and messaged a bunch of people from um, both Georgia Tech as well as UPenn MCIT program to hear their perspective on the program and what was experience like for them. So of, of course it is scary and it is time consuming to reach out to grad uh, to alumni uh, and I was also thinking like why would they reply to me but surprisingly um, I had a I, I had a good number of people who uh, were very generous to spend 10 to 15 minutes of their life to share some of their experiences. Um, and those are really helpful for me to understand what the program is really like and how people find uh, the program. Okay, up next uh, is tuition. Uh, I'll say this category made a lot bigger difference amongst schools, not only across schools, but obviously between online versus on-campus programs. As I mentioned earlier, uh, doing an online program was not an option for me, but for those uh, who find online program attractive, here's the breakdown of the cost. Um, for UPenn on campus, the annual tuition is for the first year is around 23K, and for second year, it's around 42K. So in total, it's a little all over 100K for tuition, uh, related fee only. And for online course, it's around 22K per first year and 15K for your second year, totaling up to 37K, uh, which is around a one third of the on-campus um, tuition fee. On the other hand, Georgia Tech, um, it was a bit harder to get the number for Georgia Tech because 
the tuition differs uh, depending on your residency status, whether you are in state, out of state, international, um, and whatnot. But if I recall my memory correctly, it was quite significantly cheaper than the UPenn one. Obviously, it's not a cheap tuition, but compared to UPenn one, it was significantly cheaper. I think it was around 60K. I'm balling a range here. It was around 50 to 80K uh, in total to finish the program. But don't quote on me. Please do your own research because I think the rate applies differently per your residency status. Um, however, for Georgia Tech online course, it's really affordable. I'll say it's around 7 to 8.5K to finish the full degree. Another reason uh, why tuition makes a huge difference between these two schools were that um, for Georgia Tech, you're not allowed to take on RA or TA research assistance or teaching assistance job on your first semester. But from your second semester, you can find ways to take on those roles. And once you have those, your tuition will be waived. So you can just imagine how you can bring your tuition down um, by by a significant amount uh, by taking on those uh, opportunities at Georgia Tech. So yeah, from cost efficiency perspective, uh, I was leaning more towards Georgia Tech. Um, and third criteria obviously uh, was curriculum, curriculum and courses I could take. And I, and for this, you can uh, rely on the school provided resources. I went to each program's um, website to learn more about what are some of the required courses versus electives that I need to take and what are available courses that I could choose from, like how competitive it is to get into those classes. Um, surprisingly, um, registration was not as stressful um, here at UPenn, but in my undergrad, getting into certain courses were very difficult. So I also like did some Reddit research on how uh, difficult it is to get into those classes. For UPenn MCIT program, uh, what I found really interesting was that the program is designed to really prepare students who may not have a C as solid foundation um, to have all those foundations ready by their first year and in their second year they can choose their concentration and um, take on more advanced courses of their choice which seemed to be a great fit for me because I really wanted to take time um, despite it being really hard because a lot of people that I did I took on coffee chat with did mention that they had cried many times uh, in their first year because the course materials are not easy. But it was really exciting for me because uh, that's exactly what I wanted from the program to have a very solid foundation so that I can even identify what are some of the niche topics or a field that, that I would like to do in advanced um, course, take an advanced courses on. Yeah, and for Georgia Tech, obviously it has a lot of great courses, but uh, what appealed a bit less to me was that in the moment when I was choosing a school, I wasn't exactly sure what would be my niche concentration. I really wanted to like start with the foundational courses, but then they don't really offer foundational courses because there's an expectation that the students already come with uh, four years of um, CS undergrad experiences. Yeah, so those were some of the considerations that I had in regards to classes and courses. Another things that I did consider but were never a make it or break it consideration were the cities. For example, Georgia Tech would, is located in Atlanta where there's a huge Korean community which was a big plus for me and also um, Philadelphia which is where the UPenn is uh, located it has its own merits as well being uh, near by New York and some of those considerations but it never really occurred to me as a big problem or a big appeal of its own but um, just so that I can get excited about my next two years of my life which city I'll be located in and things like that um, some of the 
specific considerations that I had make um, was that by the time I had all my uh, acceptance letters from the schools that I had applied to, I think I had to make a decision by March. I think some schools asked me to make decisions earlier while other schools like gave me a deadline by March. By then, um, I had a full-time offer as a product manager uh, based in Dubai. That was a huge consideration for me because I thought it would be great to have a full-time work experience before pursuing a master's degree, especially if I want to pursue more of a software engineering job after graduation. Ha having, having this full-time experience as a product manager would have been a great soft and so hard skills that I could gain um, that I may not be able to gain as a software engineer in the future, right? So that was a huge decision point for me that I had to make a lot of trade-off. And another thing um, is that I could um, just decline the offers and reapply next year to um, all of these schools again um, and probably most likely I might be able to get in because I would have just more experience on my resume and portfolio um, however I was just really tired to go through this whole process again from getting recommendation letters and like writing an application and it also like costs money to apply to these schools so at that time I was just thinking that I will never be able to go through this journey again. So yeah, that, those are some of the things that I was navigating. So what I started to do is I started reaching out to school. Uh, so I started reaching out um, if they allow deferral. And luckily, UPenn uh, allowed me to do deferrals um, for a year. And up to two years, I think, I could have deferred, which I thought would buy me enough time to gain those experience those full-time experiences that I wanted to get and yeah so to me um being able to have this flexibility of the far a year or two and have this full-time uh, APM experience uh, before starting a master's was a huge benefit for me so that's why ultimately I had chosen to take an offer from the UPAN, which I had deferred for a year and then started my uh, full-time product manager job uh, in uh, in Dubai. And, and yeah, so these are some of the things that I had considered while I was applying um, and choosing from all the places that I've got um, acceptance from. I, I do remember doing a lot of late night research and like, doubting and second guessing my choices because obviously um, you can listen from other people on their choices but um, there's honestly not that many information um, on this online so you'd have to like reach out to a lot of people to hear their stories so um, yeah it will take time and I do think it will be it won't be an easy, it might not be an easy decision to make. And that's okay because it's um, a big time, again, and money and life commitment that you're making. But know that uh, having had this thought, you would make the best decision for yourself. And whichever the decision you make, you can make the best out of it. So good luck with your application process and um, decision process and um, everything in between. And yeah, and thank you so much for watching. And I hope to see you guys soon in another video. Bye.